Germany, the land of sausages, beers, iconic cars, and football, right? But those days are over. Germany are no longer part of the elite in modern football. Germany are going home from this World Cup. Japan have done it again! Damit ist Deutschland raus zum zweiten Mal in Folge. Ja, ich glaube, was man so ein bisschen verpasst hat in, in den letzten Jahren, ist, ähm, sich auf das Wesentliche wieder zu konzentrieren, also auf den Fußball. Hansi Flick has been sacked. Julian Nagelsmann has been picked as the new coach. What is going on in German football? Too much politics, some say. Just focus on the game and play football. Others say Germany have simply lost their good old fighting mentality. You know, it was always like we run, fight and all this stuff, but you really need to see it. But is it really that simple? I think it goes much deeper. Germany has a problem and it starts right here with the youngest kids on the pitch. Germany's next generation. They dream of becoming stars in the Bundesliga and the national team. But all these exciting talents we've seen in Germany lately are not German. Even Germany's biggest prospect spent most of his childhood in England, Jamal Musiala. He was developed at Chelsea and Southampton. A huge talent pool, but we do not give them the best education. Germany are struggling to develop world-class players in almost every position. No elite fullbacks, no world-class number nine strikers. Long gone are the days of Miroslav Klose and Philipp Lahm. Some nations like Spain or England bring more players to an absolute top level. If we have Florian Wirth, yes, of course we do. But why haven't we got 10? What is going wrong in German football? We meet legends, coaches and critics to find out more. How can Germany reform itself to get back to the top? Let's go find out, shall we? Let's start with the facts. Football still is the most popular sport in Germany by far. The German FA is the biggest sports federation worldwide. 1.3 million kids under 14 play the beautiful game. The problem? Many of these kids stop playing when they get older. Only 400,000 are left in the 15 to 18 age group. And that number is decreasing every year. Only a few will eventually make it and become pros. But German under 23 players are getting less and less playing time in the Bundesliga. From 21% in 2010, to just 6% in 2020. Als Deutschland mit ähm, 81 Millionen Menschen alle spielen Fußball vielleicht auch nicht richtig gut werden mussten um, im Nachwuchsfußball, weil du es trotzdem immer irgendwie hinkriegst, dass gute Spieler rauskommen. Aber jetzt machen es die anderen Nationen zu gut. So the German FA came up with a plan. We need to rethink youth football. We need to overhaul the system, change youth football as we know it. A revolution in German football. The German FA implemented a new format in kids football and it's getting rolled out all over the country. Mandatory from the 2024 season. A huge challenge because in Germany you have 21 local football associations below the FA with their own interests. The new game format looks like this, not just two but four mini goals and smaller pitches and teams with only three to four players. In which way does that help developing the skills so they can maybe be successful maybe at a later stage in their career? Yeah, I'm totally convinced that in this age you build the frame, the base. Because if you're playing seven against seven, there are maybe 80% of the kids who do not have the ball. And they cannot develop their skills, their technique, their dribble skills. Be yourself, be creative, do mistakes. It's more about you, your individuality. Und der U11-Trainer sagt zu mir, immer wenn wir gegen Belgier spielen, sind die besser als wir. Unabhängig davon, welcher Verein aus Belgien, die sind besser als wir. Also ist auch klar, dass wir im Kinderfußball ansetzen müssen. Damit wir, damit wir in der U11 nicht schlechter sind als die, als die Belgier. Give them the ball and let them play. Let talents express themselves on the pitch. A bit like street football. Doesn't sound too difficult, but for Germany this is new territory. Former Bayern player Mehmet Scholl received a huge backlash back in 2017 when he criticized the youth coaching in Germany. The young players are not allowed to dribble anymore, to act freely on the pitch, he said. Instead, they can run backwards and fart in 18 different formations. Well, we didn't make that up. He actually said that. 
And he's right. Studies have shown that in Spain and Portugal, training sessions in youth academies are centered around the idea of decision making. In tense drills in small areas of the pitch, the ball as much as possible at your feet. Whereas in Germany, way too much time is still spent on athletics training. Was ich ein bisschen vermisse, ist so mehr die Spielintelligenz. Also Dinge zu sehen, mehr Situationen einschätzen zu können. Wie setze ich meine Mitspieler auch richtig ein? If we look on other countries, Spain started 20 years ago playing in a smaller format. Look how world class they are currently. France is playing two versus two tournaments every weekend. They have more success in just developing outstanding dribblers. Look at Kingsley Coman. He's always looking for the one versus one. Why? Because he was learning it from the beginning. And I'm convinced that the, the way how they teach them playing football is part of their success. And so we start with the youngest, but also for the older uh, guys, we have to, to change. Uh, the content of training so that we have more small-sided games also in a older age group. Training the young brain to make quick decisions. Imagine you play three against three for one year in every training session. The player would have to make 20,000 decisions with the ball, whereas a player in a seven against seven has to make just 5,000. So who is going to be the better footballer? But Germany has a long way to go. Hard to believe it was a German who invented the so-called Funinho format. Horst Wein promoted small-sided games for young footballers since the 1980s. But as a field hockey coach, no one took him seriously in Germany. So he moved to Spain, where he lived in Barcelona for many years and became an icon. ¿Cómo es estimular la imaginación, la fantasía y la creatividad, que normalmente son capacidades innatas? Wein has inspired coaches around the world, from Barcelona's Youth Academy to Arrigo Sacchi in Italy. No wonder Barcelona tops the list of clubs which produce the most players for the top five European leagues. Here you can see the best youth academies in Europe. Spain and France both have seven clubs in the top 25. And there are only two clubs from Germany. Bayern Munich and Borussia Dortmund are nowhere to be seen. In the past you had homegrown Bavarians, but these days, Germany's biggest clubs rarely develop outstanding players in their youth ranks. They often buy talent from abroad, from France, the UK, even from the US. Christian Pulisic and Gio Reyna, for example, were first brought into Dortmund's under-19 squads. In the under-19 teams, there are three to six, seven uh, international players. If you're always searching around you, you will always find a better one and don't have the time to develop uh, the one you have. It's a business model. The weak spot of this business model is that you don't develop German talent. Yet some German talents make it to the top. And the national team still has players from the best clubs in the world. Yeah, also we have also players who can play 1 against 1. And I don't know if we had so many before. We had Jamal Musiala with uh, Leroy Sané, with Serge Gnabry. We had not so much before, and we had to deal with the collective and collective with our game plan. Germany has a special place in football history. German football was feared worldwide for other qualities than fancy footwork. From 1954 to 2014, Germany never had the best players, but they had the best team. And one thing was certain, they knew how to win. It's very important that we actually are able to show our, our German uh, abilities, uh, the DNA, what um, we actually get res well respected from, uh, from the other countries. So, you know, it was always like we run, fight and all this stuff, but you really need to see it. Germany has always been about hard work and efficiency. Not only on the football pitch, also when it comes to everyday life and business. Das Abenteuer unserer Zeit, der Griff nach der Perfektion. After World War II, Germany quickly rose to become one of the strongest economies in the world, the number one export nation. In football, they wanted to be superior too. They became obsessed with winning, and it put pressure on the next generations. I glaube, dass die deutsche Mannschaft über Jahre hinaus nicht zu besiegen sein wird. Das tut mir leid für den Rest der Welt, aber wir werden für die nächsten Jahre nicht zu besiegen sein. Just as much as he was wrong back then. Um, the people in 2014 were wrong to 
uh, consider that we just have to move on the way we did, kind of feeling perpetuated itself into winning all the time and expecting to win all the time. If you look at the 80s, we went to every final. It was a final or a semi-final without Germany. It did not happen. We don't have the time anymore um, to develop talent because we are always in win-now mode. Yeah, the whole academies, the whole, uh, the whole teams, uh, the whole uh, training staff is always in win-now mode. And when Germany failed to win, they are in crisis mode. Like back in the year 2000, the German team crashed out of the Euros at the group stages. The football was awful, with the average age in the squad over 31. The German FA and its leading clubs took action. They launched a multi-million euro campaign to promote young talent, the famous reboot. The entire system of developing young players in Germany was revamped. Kids were scouted all over the country and Bundesliga clubs had to run so-called youth performance centers. Nowadays, Germany has 57 of these centers with many second and third division clubs part of the program. And it did pay off. Many of the 2014 World Cup winners were products of these newly created youth performance centers. German football reinvented itself and conquered the world. It was right to come up with an infrastructure and with possibilities that, were, that weren't there, but were so badly needed. And now it's some sort of a decadent moment. It is sort of, it, it's, not, it's working against its own interests. So why is one of the best systems in the world now failing? It looks like German football is obsessed with scouting and selection. There is selection of kids at very, very um, early age. We have a high amount of fluctuation. If the kid is not the right kid anymore after one year, there's a bunch of other kids waiting, maybe with better physical attributes. So there's no more consistency in the work and in the education. And the standout talents, those who stay in the academies, are pampered 24-7. Coaches organized everything very well. They organized every step, every pass, every Every move of the player was the idea of the coach. For an academy player in Germany, life and even school are both built around training. Breakfast in the morning? It's all you can eat at the buffet. You're spoiled for choice. You hop on the shuttle bus, which you can't miss because it will always wait to bring you to training. You'll never forget to bring your kit because someone has washed and folded it for you. Besides that, dozens of other staff members will run around you trying to make your life easy. Even nutritionists and video analysts have become a thing at youth level. It's a football bubble. It's a bubble, yeah, it's a bubble and you, you can't really break out. When we don't get the kids into situations off the pitch where they need to make decisions, tough decisions, and deal with the consequences out of it, then we can't expect that the, that the players can make their decisions on the pitch and turn around a game which is like 0-2. I mean, in the end of the day, I don't know, I. I was a big fan of, of, of players because they just showed great football and, and also they had a little bit, um, yeah, they were able to not give up so, so, uh, so fast and there were resistance and uh, I think that's what the supporters want to see. Resilience and leadership. It is the heart and soul of German football. No one embodied that like Bastian Schweinsteiger. Great victories in German football were always connected to great leaders. Going back to 1954 and Fritz Walter. Dass wir in Deutschland wieder äh, Spielertypen ausbilden, die, nicht, die natürlich eine gewisse Mentalität, Mentalität mitbringen. Natürlich müssen alle perfekt ausgebildet werden, fußballerisch auch. Aber auch diese Mentalität, diese Eigenschaften des Willens, auch wieder Zweikämpfe zu gewinnen. Will we ever see a Ballon d'Or winner from Germany again? Not very likely. But here in Frankfurt, they're optimistic. Here, they plan their Reboot 2.0. The DFB campus, the new home of training, technology and research, cost almost 200 million euros. It is similar to the famous Clairefontaine Center near Paris, where the French national teams come together and talented young players are taught the essence of the game. The German FA has built its own Clairefontaine, a think tank to make German football competitive again. But fancy architecture can't hide the deep-lying issues.
football, we observe the, the, the football world and we see ah, Pep Guardiola comes to Germany as a coach of, of Bayern München. Therefore, now we have to play Tiki Taka. A few years later, we see, oh, the, the, France, the France system is really good at the moment. Let's uh, do it like them. It all starts with a universal German football philosophy out, out of, uh, besides winning. <laughs> How could this new German football philosophy look like? New training methods and less focus on results? Is that enough? The next generation will show us. So what do you guys think? Where does Germany rank among the top nations in world football? And can they once again become a title contender? Let us know in the comments and hit that like button and subscribe.